We are in what we hope is the tail end of an unprecedented experience where our primary means of connecting to one another and sharing ideas has become telepresence. These virtual presence experiences where we set up a camera in our home, maybe find a blank wall or a nice bookcase to put behind us, and then we connect with our friends, our family, our colleagues, students in their homes. While there have been benefits to this, it does feel limiting. But what if it wasn't? What if, instead of being relegated to presenting from my home environment, what if my virtual presence could be from any environment, anywhere, containing anything I imagine? Could I make my virtual presence even more effective and better than an in-person experience? There's no doubt this past year or more has been incredibly tragic and traumatic with the loss and impact on so many people from pandemic, injustice, and even for those that manage to navigate and get through those challenges relatively unscathed, we were all removed from our connection to place. Bespoke places designed and built for specific purposes. Places like gyms, libraries, museums, and of course schools. These are places where when you walk in the door, your mindset changes because of their very design. You're there to exercise, to study, to learn, maybe even be entertained in the case of concert halls and sports stadiums. Instead, we're connecting virtually, where perhaps as a student, you connect to your chemistry class and you see your chemistry teacher in their home. You connect to your engineering class and you see your engineering teacher in their home. You connect to a history teacher. You see your history teacher in their home. Gone is the experience of entering a space designed for the subject at hand. But what if that didn't have to be the case? Because there were advantages to this whole telepresence, virtual presence thing. We didn't have to commute or travel. For myself, I filled up my gas tank in the first week of March of 2020 and didn't need to refill again for another three months. That was a huge economic savings for my family. And think of the example of large conferences where tens of thousands of people from perhaps all over the world gather in a single city to exchange ideas. Each one of those thousands of attendees expended resources on flights and hotels. Jet fuel burned in the atmosphere to bring them all together, and then again burned to bring them back home. Those conferences still took place through virtual presence. Connecting from home to home through telepresence, the environmental impact was avoided, and the resource expenditures were avoided. So what if we could take those advantages, but not be limited by the home environment? I mean, what could that be? I know for myself, instead of being at a desk with some computer monitors, I'd probably get rid of those and add holographic screens. Yeah. Then when I look over at my screen to see my conference attendees, the attendees can see that I'm looking at them, not simply away from the camera. Or if I wanted to talk about the Apollo missions, instead of having bookcases behind me, I could have a full-scale Apollo lunar lander. If I want to teach engineering, I could bring a full representation, three-dimensional, 
of an engineering lab setup. Typically, in person, only a few students at a time could have access to this. But through virtual presence, any number of students can access this. And I can teach about it virtually via video stream, teleconferencing, or I can share this via a web browser or an application or virtual reality. And I'm not limited to these technological marvels. If I wanted to teach about life sciences or natural history, maybe dinosaurs and fossils, well, why not bring in a T-Rex skull for good measure? Everything here, even this whole stage, is all virtual. The technology is called virtual production. And of course, none of it exists physically, at least not as you're seeing it now. The T-Rex skull, that does exist physically in the Academy of Natural Sciences. Just a few hundred photos were used to create a three-dimensional model. Same for the engineering setup. And the lunar lander, it's a free download from the Smithsonian. For myself, I am, of course, sitting in a home in a small space, maybe 10 foot by 5 foot, with a green sheet behind me. But instead of being limited by that small space, I can present myself instead on a dramatic stage with a variety of interesting subject matters. Now, of course, the first thought that may come to mind is, well, that's just a bunch of Hollywood effects. It requires special hardware and expensive software. And the first part of that thought is true, that in places like Hollywood and other media production hubs, this technology, virtual production, it's used to create movies and episodic shows and even live broadcasts for news and sports. We love this content. But the misconception is that it requires specialized hardware or expensive software. The truth is, everything you're seeing right now, I'm creating on a six-year-old computer. It has a pretty decent graphics card that would be good for video games. But it is six years old. It is not the latest and greatest, and there's nothing particularly special about it. And beyond that, the software itself, well, that's downloadable completely for free. This technology today is so ubiquitous, it's probably already in use in your home today. If you, or perhaps more likely your kids, compete and collaborate with friends on the internet using video games like Fortnite or Rocket League, the tools made to create those collaborative experiences are exactly the tools used to create virtual productions like this. And again, it's downloadable for free. So, instead of being limited to the physical confines of my small 10 foot by 5 foot room, I can present from a stage populated with anything I can imagine. And you can too. What will you create?